Hey everyone, JT from eBike Escape here. In today's video, we're gonna take a look at this commuter styled torque sensor equipped e-bike from Ride One Up, the Limited. So let's get into it. Before we get into the review of this really e-bike that holds a special place as the first e-bike that I ever got to ride. Not this one in particular, Ryan had an old limited, so there is actually a older review of a limited on our channel, but we wanted to go ahead and give an updated review on that as Ride One Up has kind of innovated and changed a couple things on this bike. But before we get into all of that, I just wanna ask everyone a couple quick favors. If you are looking to purchase any Ride One Up model or any e-bike, please consider using the links down in the description. All purchases made through those links help directly support e-bike escape and help us continue to make content like this one. Also linked down in the description, we'll have links to our e-bike accessories list, top e-bikes brands page, and our e-bikes discount codes page, where we frequently track deals and update that page so that you can get the best deal on an e-bike. Ride One Up is someone who frequents that list pretty frequently. So if you're trying to maybe save a little bit of money or wait until this bike goes on sale, it's a good page to keep an eye on. With that out of the way, let's, uh, let's do a little quick overview of Ride One Up so you know what you're getting when you purchase one of their e-bikes, and then we'll take a close look at the Limited. So I hinted at it a little bit before, but the Limited is actually an e-bike that holds a little bit of a special place to me because it's one of the first e-bikes that I ever got to ride. When I first met Ryan, I had never ridden an e-bike. I'd ridden bikes before, but never ridden an e-bike itself. So Ryan and I actually went and did some garage sale hopping with our kids and he had his limited all fitted out with all kinds of accessories as well as a burly trailer. So what we did is he threw my kids in the burly trailer and we kind of went around garage sale hopping in neighborhood. It was a lot of fun. It was my first soiree per se into e-bikes and I was hooked from that moment forward and really that kind of goes hand in hand with how everybody gets hooked to an e-bike. Once you ride one for the first time, you end up with a smile on your face and you just say, I have to have one. Now, the Limited is not the only commuter style e-bike that Ride One Up offers. Really, the almost the entire lineup of e-bikes are commuter style. The Limited is the only e-bike that Ride One Up offers that has a torque sensor. Now, all the other models are offered with a cadence sensor. And so the difference between a torque sensor and cadence sensor, when you get to our riding footage, we'll try and talk about it a little bit better to try and portray it. It's also hard to get a feeling through on a video, but we will do our best. But the quick overview is, is that a cadence sensor is basically like an on-off switch. It tells if you are pedaling, it's gonna provide you X amount of power. Uh, it's a set number, whereas a torque sensor will actually measure the amount of effort that you're putting in and rotations you're putting into the crank and amplify that into a power level. And so the more effort and rotations you're putting in, the more power it's going to give you. This bike does offer a throttle like all of Ride One Up's models. So even if it is a torque sensor and you're feeling maybe a little winded or you just don't want to pedal that time, you can just simply use the throttle. So Ride One Up really has a large lineup of commuter style e-bikes ranging from, you know, close to $1,000 all the way up to over $2,000. All of the bikes change in spec and have some really cool features. Ride One Up is a value brand to us because they offer a lot of value for not a lot of cost. One of the ways that they do save on that cost that you do have to be aware of is that they do not come installed with a fork or cranks a lot of times. What that allows them to do is get the bike into a smaller box to save a little bit on shipping. While we are on the subject of shipping, all of Ride One Up's bikes can be shipped in the United States for free. If you want to ship to Alaska or Hawaii, there's a $400 upcharge and you can also ship their bikes to Canada with a $100 upcharge on that as well. But all of the shipping in the continental United States is free and included in the price. Let's quickly run through all the models that Ride One Up offers so you kind of know what they offer and you kind of get an idea of their lineup. Well, starting at their most affordable, Ride One Up offers the Core 5. Core 5 comes in at 1045 offered in two frame styles, a uh, step through like you kind of see here, as well as a high step where you would have a traditional top bar here. And this limited for noting is also offered in both those frame styles. But again, we will get into that just after we go over this quick overview. The next bike they offer is the Roadster V2, offering a couple frame sizes. That's more of a traditional road style e-bike. Then you step up to the Taurus, which is a little bit bigger of a motor, has some nice styling components to it, has some tan sidewall tires and a suspension front fork. The next in the lineup, you have the Cafe Cruiser, which has some really nice swept back handlebars and has really a sleek frame design. Then as you go up from there, you have the 700 series, which is a little bit of a bigger frame bike, comes in quite a bit heavier. Then you have the Limited, like you see here, which comes in at 1695. Above the Limited, you have the Prodigy, which was really one of our first 
doses of a budget mid-drive e-bike and we were super excited to be able to test ride that bike we got the xr model which was their mountain bike style bike a lot of fun but if you're looking for a budget priced really fun to ride mid-drive e-bike we recommend the prodigy and then above the prodigy you have the rev one which is the newly released e-moped bike from ride one up it is offered in a full suspension and hardtail variant and that was one of the bikes that ryan had probably the most fun on riding around down in florida definitely worth checking out quick note all of those bikes i just mentioned we have full reviews on they will be linked in the upper right hand corner so you can simply click that playlist and find the model on there that you're interested in and get our full thoughts on that bike the Limited is offered in two frame sizes, a high step and a low step. Low step is that what you see here. High step, like I said, has that traditional top bar. Both the size range for both of those frame sizes is five foot six to six foot four. It is offered in two colors. This color you see here is the sandstone. And then the other color that is offered in is a midnight gray. The Limited comes in on the lower end of the weight spectrum for some of the other Ride One Up models. It comes in at 53 pounds and has a weight capacity of 300 pounds. To put that in contrast, the 700 series comes in at about 10 pounds more at 62 pounds. That's a good overview of the Limited. Let's go ahead and take a closer look. Starting up here in the front, we have 27.5 by 2.4 WTB Groove E tires. These have really a street style tread but they could handle maybe a crushed gravel path as it is a softer compound. But these are some really nice tires. They roll really nice, especially on the street. They're not gonna take any power away from you. And then down here, this is a quick release front. So if you wanted to say, pull the tire off for storage, or if you had to fix a flat, it is gonna be very nice and easy to do. Moving around to the other side here, we have Tektro hydraulic disc brakes paired to a 180 millimeter front disc rotor. Always happy to see Hydraulic disc brakes at this price point is something that we've kind of come to expect. Moving up here, you'll notice we have a suspension fork. Now, something very special about this front fork, not something we see really at a lot of price points, is this is a air fork. So what it is, is you will take this air side off and you actually have a little valve there. So now that valve, you will need a suspension front pump to put air in. You cannot use a traditional bike pump or air compressor. You need a special suspension pump. And what you will do is reference this sticker back here. I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but you have your rider's weight on the left and you have a corresponding PSI on the right. You do not fill this over 100 PSI, but what that allows you to do is kind of customize and tune the front to add a little bit more plushness to your ride. Now I did put 100 PSI in this front fork as that corresponds to my weight. And then coming around to the other side over here, we have this nice lockout knob which is nicely labeled. And then also here, you will notice this O-ring on the stanchion here. Now this is a travel O-ring. So what you will do is put it all the way down. You will set your air pressure and then you'll just go out and ride your bike like you would. And you will notice where, how high up that O-ring goes up here. And that'll tell you how much travel you're getting out of the front suspension. And if you really need to add any more pressure, the higher the O-ring, the more pressure you're gonna need. Again, not exceeding that 100 PSI limit. Now this bike does not come with fenders, but it does have the option to purchase them separately. We have this light up here. This is a very common light that we see on a lot of e-bikes. This is the, I believe a Bushnell light. It's not the brightest light we see offered, but it is light nonetheless. It will provide some visibility to see at night, but if you wanna provide some be seen visibility, we always recommend a handlebar mounted light that flashes. It really provides that extra amount of visibility to be seen during the day. We have our hose coming up here separate from the cables. And then you'll notice that the cables are wrapped almost end to end, go down and then disappear into the down tube right here. So it gives you a nice sleek look on the down tube. They come out again down there at the bottom to go back to the motor and things. And then tucked here behind these cables, you'll notice this one up badge, which is this nice badge that we find affixed to a lot of their bikes. And you can notice it says class three and established in 2018. This ride one up e-bike is a class three capable e-bike. Coming around here, you'll notice we have our cockpit. We have the matching Tektro hydraulic disc brake levers up here. One thing to note about this e-bike is that it does not have motor cutoffs. That was kind of a surprise to us as it is a 750 watt capable motor, but I think with the torque sensor, they might decide that you don't really need the motor cutoffs as when you stop pedaling, it's a little bit more reactive to that, but definitely something worth noting. We would have loved to see motor cutoffs on there. Coming around, you'll notice we have a locking ergonomic grip. Always love seeing locking grips. We have a um, the undermounted thumb shifter here, thumb and pointer finger shifter. We, these shifters just feel a little bit more high quality. And you also notice this is an eight speed. 
Coming over to the other side, we have a matching grip, matching texture lever, and a thumb throttle. And then here is the LCD display. This is a color LCD display. I'm gonna go ahead and push this up under this tree and do the shade so we have a better chance of seeing that. While we love the color functionality of the displays, they are a little bit difficult to see in direct sunlight. And while we're also up here in the cockpit, I wanna point out these handlebars. So one thing Ride One Up does is on these step-through models, they provide these more swept back style handlebars. Whereas if you get the high step model, they put a more straight traditional style bar. The swept back handlebars really adds to the comfort and accessibility of the step-through model. We here at E-Bike Escape love to get the step-through models as we don't feel that they're girl bikes. We just think that they increase the ability for access to all people to get on a bike and ride. Down here, we have a zoom stem. It gives you the step up and degree of angle it has here. And these also are zoom handlebars. I'm gonna go ahead and move us up to the shade real quick so we can take a look at the display. In the shade of my tree here, I'm gonna go ahead and push the power button to turn it on. There you go. Nice ride one up logo on the screen. And here it is. This is a power of watts that you're putting out, a mile per hour, and a voltage that is currently in the battery. Then down at the bottom, we have a odometer, a pedal assist level, one, zero to three. And then we also have a trip meter in miles. And then to cycle through those, you simply push the power button, max speed changed on the left, average mile per hour, time that the bike has been on, and back to odometer. And if you hold the minus button, bike goes into walk mode. Notice that the pedal assist there, changed to a person on a bike for walking mode. And then if we hold the plus button, that's how you actually turn on the lights. You notice the display dimmed and this headlight turned on. This would be a good time for us to not let the bike fall over and show you that light in not direct sunlight. So again, it is a pretty nice and bright LED display. But like we said before, we prefer something maybe with a flashing function. And quick note, this bike does not have a tail light or anything like that. So a rear mounted flashing tail light is always nice as well. And then to get into the advanced settings, you simply hold the plus and minus button. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the headlight so we can see. And here you have three settings, display setting and advanced settings. So display settings, go under there. You have trip reset, you can toggle units for whether you want imperial or metric, whether you want miles or kilometers. You can change the wheel size, your overall speed limit. Um, I believe, yep, you can go ahead and turn that up. We're gonna go ahead and leave this as a class three e-bike. You set the voltage, not something we recommend messing with your SOC, um, which is your state of charge view. So you can change that whether you want voltage or if you wanted a percentage. So we're gonna go and change it to percentage. You can see that. And then just how sensitive the uh, torque sensor is, you can change that. We're gonna go ahead and leave that as the factory setting. Go back here, we're gonna go into advanced settings. So this is your power set. Here you can change how many power levels you have. So we're currently set to zero to three. We're gonna go ahead and leave that, but it looks like you can change that to one to three, one to five, zero to seven, one to seven, zero to nine, one to nine. So we're gonna go, like I said, gonna go ahead and leave that at zero to three. And then you can also, oh, I realized this too. You can also change the percentage of power per pedal assist level that you're in. So go ahead and leave those there, cycle out. You have your uh, current limit for how many currents you will draw, um, assist number, speed sensor, slow start, LCD luminance for if you wanted to change the um, brightness of the display, we have it set to 100%. And then you can also set a password. Um, for when you turn the bike on and off. It's a nice safety feature if you're, say, leaving the bike somewhere as these do not have keys and you don't have the option to take it, the battery with you because the keys are not needed to start the bike. So you can set that password. We're gonna go ahead and leave that off and then we'll go back here and that is it. And then we're just gonna go ahead and exit out back to the home screen. As you can see here in the upper right-hand corner, that is now a percentage at 92%. All right, while I'm moving the bike back over here for looking at the display, I realized I forgot to push on the front suspension for you guys. I'm gonna go ahead and do this, uh, push on it now, and this is with it locked. So that is with the nub on the lockout pushed all the way back towards the bike. And if I push that all the way around towards the front, it is now unlocked. And yep, that is, that is it feels like a, there's a spring inside and then there's definitely an air cartridge on the other side, just so you can tell from the springiness. And being able to adjust that with air pressure is really just adds that little extra level of, uh, it just has a different feeling than just having a spring that you're just compressing on. I really like the feeling of air forks. It's probably the inner mountain biker in me where I'm just used to uh, like a front air fork. Um, but I really like the way that this feels and it's really gonna feel nice out on trails, soaking up bumps, things like that. So now working our way down from the cockpit area, here is a look at the down tube and that integrated battery. On the top of the battery here, there's this button 
that you press. See if I can get you in there. So you see that blue light? That is the um, level of the battery. There, I believe there are three colors, green, blue, and red, telling you those relate to percentage. On the side here, there is a charging port. So this battery can be charged on or off the bike. You also have the key spot. And yeah, it's a nice integrated battery. We will pull that out and look at the capacity here in a few. Coming down, you can see some of the branding. We have Ride One Up here, and they have this like kind of two-tone color scheme here, which is kind of nice because this lower area is really going to get beat up with rocks and other things. So having it a darker color just makes it nicer to keep protecting that that other uh, color scheme. Whether you go with the black or, or the, I'm sorry, whether you go with the sandstone or the gray. You see it goes all the way down. We do have two bottle cage bosses here. Always like seeing bottle cage bosses. Just to note, if you are buying this for an accessibility reason, for say having the step through ability, if you put a bottle cage boss here, a lock or something like that, it is gonna limit your uh, room getting through there. Coming down, we have a look at the nice metal Welgo pedals. We find these pedals adequate. They get you around. But if you're looking for something maybe with a little bit more color, a little bit more grip, be sure to check out our accessories list. This is a look at a single-sided front 44 tooth chain ring. The single side here is metal. Working our way down, we have this nice Ride One Up branded chain stay. And then on the back side, it says, take your riding to the next level. I've tried to get that on camera, but it's just not going to show through. But it's just a nice little touch Ride One Up adds. And then coming back here, we actually have something that you don't see on a lot of bikes. We have a cassette. Again, this is not a freewheel. This is an actual cassette. And this is an eight speed cassette. This is an 11 to 32 tooth cassette. A little bit higher end than we see on some bikes, just a little bit easier to change. And then also here, a little bit higher than what we see on some other bikes too, we have an Altus derailleur, a Shimano Altus derailleur. We find these derailleurs to be really nice. We've actually seen these on some mountain bikes. This again, these are really nice derailers. You have a nice thumb adjuster here if you need to adjust your uh, shifting at all because there's any problems. That pairs really nicely with the um, under thumb shifter that we see versus the typical over the thumb sys index that we see from Shimano. And then here's a look at the rear WTB Groove E tire. Now, if in the rear here, if you say got a flat and had to replace it, it'd be quite cumbersome to get to. So that's why we recommend today's video sponsor, Tannis Tire Liners. So we'll throw it to them for a brief message. This video is sponsored by Tannis. We're really excited to have Tannis as our first sponsor here at eBike Escape. Getting flats on an e-bike can be especially difficult to fix, so why not help prevent them in the first place? Tannis Armor inserts are inserts that go inside your tire, providing 15 millimeters of protection at the base and two millimeters of protection on the sidewalls. Tannis makes purchasing the liners super simple. Simply go to their website, type in your tire size, it spits out the liners you need, don't forget the tubes. Then you can either install them at home by yourself or take them to your local trusted bike shop. Well, we do know there are many e-bike manufacturers that offer Tannis tire liners on their website. If you go directly to Tannis' website, we have negotiated a discount code for e-bike escape viewers. Discount code can be found in the description below. Thanks to Tannis for sponsoring this video. Again, we really recommend their products. We really like the tire liners. They just help add that extra level of protection, especially if you're in a place where you have, say, goat heads or something like that. Working our way up and around the frame, you will notice these bolt holes here. Those in, in here, those are mounts for fenders. And if you wanted to, um, say, add a rear rack, Ride One Up does sell those separately. Coming right here, we have a matching Tetro hydraulic disc brake paired to a 180 millimeter rear rotor. And then getting in close here, here is a look at that 750 watt, 95 newton meters of torque rear motor. Found this motor to be very adequate getting up and around. I can't wait to show you guys that on the hill test and especially paired to that torque sensor that we have up here on the pedal. And then here is a look at the kickstand that we almost missed over. It is spaced far enough back that you don't have to worry about when you're pedaling, hitting that, or if you're moving it around rather. So it's nice to see a kickstand added. And then working our way up, here is a look at the saddle. I'll pull the battery out in just a minute, but this is a Cellar Royale freeway saddle. Now I do want to show you the height on this, as this frame area here is not super large. So somebody like Ryan might feel a little cramped on a bike like this, but there is enough seat height, again, going to that minimum insertion point there, to get that seat pretty high up. I don't, uh, I don't think that exactly looks the most comfortable, but so there's plenty of seat height there. If you are a taller rider, go ahead and set it right about there. And then as far as seats go, this is a fairly comfortable seat. We always recommend kind of finding a seat that fits you best. But if you need some recommendations, we kind of track what seats we see people buy. So be sure to check our accessories list where we have some of the top recommended seats from people. 
All right, let me go ahead and get the keys and pull out that battery. All right, so to pull off the battery, you need the keys. Simply insert in, there's a nice diagram, twist them towards the front of the bike, and you may have to lift up on the battery a little bit to get it out of the frame. It's simply, you slide it up and out. There are two pegs here that catch on the bottom, so just simple way to get it out. Again, I already talked about the battery here on the front. Uh, one note about that too, if you let the bike sit for a little bit of time, like a week or something, you may have to push that to wake up the battery. It's very common for these batteries to go to sleep after a period of time. We have some uh, bikes in our shop that go to sleep after about 48 hours. So just always nice before you hop on, just push that, make sure the light comes on to wake it up. Again, charging port on the side can be charged on or off the bike. And here's a look at the side. This is a 48 volt, 14 amp hour battery, 672 watt hours. We've seen these batteries on a few bikes. I like the integrated appearance of these and getting it back in is very simple. You simply line up those two bottom pegs and simply drop the battery in. You'll hear a click and pull up, make sure it doesn't come out anymore. There's these two nubs on the front. You just pull up and then pull the keys out. And again, you do not need the keys to drive the bike. Now, this is a 14 amp hour battery. If you're looking for something maybe a little bit bigger for the same price, but you're okay with giving up that torque sensor, the Ride One Up 700 series, which we did a full review on, be in the upper right hand corner. If you wanted to maybe reference that bike because you're looking for something with a little bit more battery, um, yeah, but with that out of the way, that pretty much wraps up the walk around. That's all the uh, fine details of this bike per se. So let's go ahead and throw it over to myself for some riding footage where I will try and explain the torque sensor and kind of show you how that operates. Again, it's gonna be very difficult to get through on camera, but I will do my best. And oh, and we are going to take this 95 Newton meter of torque rear motor up a hill. Hey everyone, here we are at the riding portion of the limited review, the ride went up limited. Um, man. So to get here, to preserve some battery, there's a big hill. Um, and I like to use that as a test to determine how pedal, pedalable a bike is without power. And uh, this bike, more than most because of its weight, is definitely more pedalable. Pedalable, God, that's a, that's a little bit of a tongue twister. But yeah, it's a little bit more pedalable than some others. Um, I, I worked a little bit getting up and over the hill, but uh, it wasn't too bad. I actually, I would, I would prefer to ride this maybe uh, over a hill with no battery powered versus uh, maybe a bike that weighs 60, 70 pounds. So like this coming in at about 53 pounds is pretty nice. All right, here we are. I'm gonna go ahead and start in pedal assist level one. Remember there's only three pedal assists on this. I'm gonna ride um, at the start just in throttle to kind of show you how quickly it accelerates and stuff like that. I don't believe that is tied to pedal assist, but I will play with that as we ride. And then I will go to pedaling portion where I will uh, shift and try and show you how a torque sensor reacts to you inputting power and everything. Um, it, is, it is just a much more natural of a feel as it doesn't, it's not an on-off switch like a cadence sensor. It's more of a, a gradual depending upon how much effort you're putting in. All right, let's go ahead and start out with throttle only. Here we go, we are in pedal assist level one. I'll be able to tell pretty quickly if you're limited by power via pedal assist. At about eight miles an hour now. Oh, head jumped up quickly, 18. Let's see. Nope, it is not limited via pedal assist. So you can tell on the GPS, the throttle stopped at 20 miles an hour. Pretty hard stop there. And so now it is holding us there. Um, it's, yeah, it's a nice gradual speed up. So that's kind of nice if you maybe aren't as comfortable on an e-bike as some other people. So it's a very approachable bike by the size, the step through everything. Ride One Up makes a very approachable uh, bike. One thing I did notice about this bike before we get into the pedal section of it, the review, is that the uh, there is a damaged link in the chain, so it's a stiff link. Um, I'm going to take it home and mess with it, but uh, I already rode the bike over the hill, so I decided that I was going to do the pedal even without that. So I may, may be a little funky with shifting, but that's just simply because of that uh, damaged link. Um, I do not expect with the Shimano shifter up here and the uh, Livio rear derailleur, you would really have any problems. And this is a problem with anybody else riding one up would definitely handle. For us, uh, I have a little bit of ability, so I will go ahead and make that adjustment myself. All right, we're, like we're gonna ride by somebody here with a chainsaw, so I'm just gonna leave it in pedal assist level one and I'm in what appears to be about sixth on the shifter over here. And we'll see how the bike handles. Yeah, so it looks like, I mean, I'm just, this is a nice easy cadence. I would actually probably shift up to make me, make myself work a little bit harder there. And we're in about, eight so that's the smallest gear on the rear as this is an eight speed so one to eight with a cassette on the rear hello Hi. there we go so yeah and i mean this is a nice easy cadence and i'm 18 miles an hour 16 uh, according to the gps i have to stop looking at the display it's about 16 miles an hour according to the gps and this is a pretty easy cadence and again if i apply a little bit more power get up to 17 there we go and yeah so 17 with the rear gear being a little off. It's a little hard for me to, to show you what that would be like. So let's go ahead and jump up without 
really changing effort. It's a little bit of a hill, so the speed went down. We're just gonna jump up to pedal assist level two here. And yep, I instantly felt the motor kick up a little bit more. And yeah, it looks like, yeah, four, I mean, I'm still providing the same amount of power in eight speed on the shifter here. And we were doing, I mean, it's a much easier cadence and we're getting up to 17, 18 miles an hour with almost no problem. And I don't remember if you, when we were looking at the advanced settings, the pedal assist one, two, and three, one was 33% power, two was 66, and three was 99 or 100. And that's something you can modify. So we're gonna go ahead and get around this turn. I'm gonna kick it up into pedal assist three. And then I'll provide a little bit more power and see if we can get up to maybe tw over 20 miles an hour, a little bit of effort. Let's see. Yeah, I mean, this motor is kicking in way more now. There we go. Again, providing, I'm, I'm not providing much more effort than I did before. 21, 22 miles an hour very easily. Again, a little bit of a twisty, turny neighborhood back here. There we go. I'm providing a little bit more power. Please forget the stickiness on the front. There's some tar stuck to the front tire. So if we don't have 28, I'm gonna blame the, uh, the tar there. Yeah, there we go, 24 miles an hour. Again, if you could see my legs, I'm not providing much effort. Uh, it's a very comfortable position with the handlebars. It's a very comfortable uh, cadence. This is just overall a very approachable and comfortable bike. I mean, it's, especially the torque sensor. I, I, we, obviously, Ryan and I are avid mountain bikers and road bikers, so it's uh, nice to have a bike that maybe feels a bit more natural and normal, per se. So yeah, providing that little bit of power, we're able to get up to 22 miles an hour pretty easily. Here we go, we're gonna go ahead and pedal a little bit faster and then this little bit of straight here and see how fast we can go. 23, 24, let's see, 25, 26. Again, I'm not out of breath, so I'm not providing too much effort, but it is still effort nonetheless. Looks like about 27 miles an hour. And if it wasn't for that damaged link in the rear, I'd be able to give her my all per se and get to 28 miles an hour very easily, which is what this bike is rated at via pedaling as class three is 28 miles an hour while pedaling. And then also still limited to only being 20 miles an hour on throttle only. So that pretty much concludes the riding footage portion here. I'm gonna go ahead and get back over the hill and we will start the hill climb test and see what this bike is capable of. If it can make it up the hill with my weight of a rider uh, up the hill. And then also we will do it in pedaling, which is what I'm looking forward to on this bike. All right, here we are at the hill climb test for the Ride One Up Limited. I'm gonna go ahead and turn my screen brightness all the way up. So hopefully you guys will be able to see that. It is a nice sunny day. It's also a little bit windy out, which <laughs> is nice because it's actually a tailwind. Um, so I'm gonna start out with doing the throttle test on this, just so that we can get the most out of the battery and see how it makes it up this hill. We, again, we will throw the specs of the hill on the screen now so that you see how steep it is. It has a, it goes, uh, has a little bit of a downhill to like those two signs, there's a creek crossing, and then it's a pretty much a gradual uphill to a steeper uphill. I believe it was about a 7% grade, but again, we'll put the specs on the screen now. Go ahead and hop up on the seat and get going. I did notice that the frame on this bike is a little um, small. So I used a little bit of pedaling there to get off, but it's a little small even kind of for me, um, but it is comfy, especially once you're up, you've got these ergonomic grips, swept back handlebars. So if you are a uh, maybe a smaller rider, this bike is gonna be uh, pretty much perfect for you. I actually have to have the seat higher than I normally am used to having it, which is uh, obscure for me, as Ryan is normally the one that has to run the seat all the way up. So there you go, the bike on throttle only gets to 20 miles an hour fairly quickly. I also found the behavior of the throttle itself is actually a little weird. So what it'll do is it'll give you power up to about 21, 22 miles an hour, and then it will stop giving you power until the speed gets to about 14, and then it kind of ramps in the power again, kind of adding to some, just makes it smoother of an engagement. So anyway, here we are there. We went through our little down there. Now we're on our gradual up. And then it bike has no problem taking myself, a 225 pound rider, up to 21 miles an hour. And here's where the hill is really going to start. Kind of gonna see what happens here. So we're getting down to 18, 17, 16, 15. And again, throttle only, not pedaling at all, 13, 12, 11. So yeah, this, uh, I'm not the ideal rider as it, because once we get to this point, like I would be pedaling up this um, just to provide that little bit of extra power. I don't need to do throttle only. I like to actually ride a bike. And it's one of the reasons why the Limited is actually uh, such an appealing bike because it, uh, 
it has the torque sensor. Um, so yeah, so we're down to about four miles an hour according to GPS, but it hasn't stopped or given up just yet. Again, we are still moving up the hill. So if you had no ability to pedal, this bike would make it up there at about four miles an hour. Again, you cannot compare this data to our other hill test because A, I'm not the same rider as Ryan, and B, uh, this is not the same hill. So there we go, we get to the top. It looks like the lowest there was about four miles an hour. And then after that, it speeds right back up to, you know, it's uh, 20, 22 miles an hour on throttle alone. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and test these brakes out by going back down the hill and I'll give you a summary of how they felt at the bottom. All right, here we are back at the bottom. These brakes, Textra hydraulic disc brakes, slow me down, no problem. I think I got up to about 30-ish miles an hour on the way down um, and then was able to just gradually apply the brakes, not enough to throw myself over the bars, obviously, but just kind of gradually bring them on uh, to slow us down. Remember, these do not have motor cutoffs. So if you're pedaling, that is something to be aware of, but they definitely have enough power that they'll be able to slow you down. All right, so we did about 74% battery. Um, when I started the hill climb test, we were somewhere in the, the range, just about like low 90s. Um, so it is, it did take quite a bit of power to get that up. But again, get the bike and myself up. But again, this, I would have been pedaling that. Um, but just know that if you are going to be throttle only, this is only a 14 amp hour battery and you may notice that. I really like the feeling of this bike as it has a torque sensor. So I mean, I am excited to get this bike pedaling up this hill as hopefully it feels a bit more natural than a cadence sensor. And that is gonna be something that's very difficult to um, show off on camera. So I'm gonna go ahead, add us up to pedal assist level one. And I am right now in three on the shifter. And this is a, this is a very slow cadence. Um, I would probably shift up here. There we go, that feels a little bit more natural. Like I said, we have a little bit of a downhill till we get to those two signs there marking the short bridge. So I'm going up into fourth on the gear change, go up into fifth and sixth. There we go. All right, that feels pretty good. So this is, yeah, this is, um like I said, pedal assist level one. And I mean, I'm going 15, a little, again, a slight uphill here but this is making it up absolutely no problem here. Um, I would probably shift down a little bit. There we go. That feels pretty good. Again, 10, 11, to, yeah, 10, 11 miles an hour there. That feels pretty good. I like, yeah, this is a nice, easy cadence. I maybe shift down just a little bit more. There we go. All right, let's go ahead and go up into pedal assist level two. I would like to be in pedal assist level three by the time we get to the steep part of the hill. So yeah, here you felt the motor kick in, again, giving us about 33% more power, getting us up to about 60% more power. There we are, 13. And I am still trying to keep the same cadence all the way up so we can get an idea. Yeah, here we go. I mean, 13 miles an hour and I'm in four on the gear shift and two on pedal assist. We can go ahead and yeah, switch it up. Post this level three here. Give us that little bit of extra power. Felt it kick in there. I mean, I had to provide just a little bit less effort. And there we go, 11 miles an hour. There, yeah, and I'm just providing a little bit of power here. I can even go down and make it a little easier for myself. But being this is a torque sensor bike, the speed will go down just a little bit. I can feel the assist drop, and there we go. Went down to about nine, but that was because I changed down in gear. So let's go ahead, we're gonna go up to four, provide a little bit more effort with my legs. And, yep, there it goes. The speed goes right up there, to back to 10. So like I said, the amount of effort you provide because the torque sensor is gonna amplify into the amount of power the motor gives you. And you can really feel the motor kind of kicking in and insisting getting up that hill. Man, this bike is definitely meant to have pedal assist on, as you can tell, because the, the speed on throttle only was, you know, four miles an hour up that hill. You really want to be providing power to this bike to get it up, especially being that it is a torque sensor. And that's definitely one of the things that sets the Ride One Up Limited out apart from the rest of the bikes and a lot of other bikes at the price point here. As it is a torque sensor bike, so you get a more natural pedal feel when you are pedaling. So yeah, if you're an avid cyclist, this is probably going to be a good pick for you. Let's go ahead and throw it to our concluding thoughts on the Ride One Up Limited. Until recently, it'd be difficult for us to recommend a budget commuter e-bike that comes equipped with a torque sensor. But with Ride One Up's recent changes to the Limited model, we have another e-bike that we can recommend. Fun fact, the first gen Limited was one of the first e-bikes that we ever reviewed here at eBike Escape. And it should say something that at nearly three years later, we are still excited to show off Ride One Up models. Ride One Up is a brand that changes and improves their models over time. So we were happy to give it a fresh look, especially now that we have a lot more reviews under our belts. Ride One Up is a brand known for offering a 
large value e-bikes at reasonable prices, just take a look at their sub $2,500 mid-drive e-bike, the Prodigy, if you don't believe us. Ride One Up is also known for offering a decent selection of city-oriented e-bikes, so if the Limited is missing something that you really want, be sure to check out our other Ride One Up reviews, as I'm pretty sure they'll have something that fits what you're looking for. The Limited is offered at $1,695, which rivals other similarly priced torque sensor e-bikes, but with the Limited packing some sweet upgrades that others lack. Not to mention the Limited frequently goes on sale. Just a note, at the time of recording, the Limited was on sale for $14.95. If you want some help trying to catch the Limited on sale, keep an eye on our e-bikes discount code page where we track all the deals and we'll be sure to keep it updated for Ride One Up. The Limited is offered in both a step through ST and a high step XR frame designs. The ST seen here has a five foot one to six foot two height range, while the XR has a recommended range of five foot six to six foot four. I'm a five foot eight rider with a 28 inch inseam and found the fit of the step through to be very comfortable. This was probably also in part due to the sweatback handlebars, which are a unique choice that Ride One Up outfits all of their ST models with. XR models maintain the standard straight handlebars. So if you're a taller rider, I'd recommend looking at the XR model for a bit more cockpit space. Now, what are these upgrades that I hinted at earlier? Starting out, there's a 750 watt motor that is rated to put out 95 newton meters of torque. Basically what that translates to is an e-bike that is capable of carrying me, a 225 pound rider, up our steep hill on motor power alone. Then you have the front suspension, which has been upgraded to an air fork versus the hydraulic forks that we typically see on a lot of e-bikes. An air fork offers you a better ability to tune and adjust no matter what terrain you're riding or your weight. The upgrades to the components continue to the eight speed drivetrain, rapid drive shifter, and 11 to 32 speed cassette. Then we move on to the tires, which are a nice city oriented tread pattern from a well-known brand WTB, and they are the Groove E model tires. The Rive One Up Limited also features Tektro hydraulic disc brakes, but just to note, they do not have motor cutoffs, which we think was done in an ability to save a little bit of money. And with the torque sensor, you don't really need the motor cutoffs as the torque sensor is able to respond quickly. Now, when we were riding, we felt perfectly capable, but it's definitely something to keep in mind if you are a newer e-bike rider. And about the torque sensor, as I mentioned, it's very difficult to describe the feeling on camera, but basically, if you're like me, a person that enjoys riding a non-e-bike or has a cycling background, torque sensors have a much more natural pedal feel versus the on-off characteristics of a cadence sensor. So just something to keep in mind to know if the Limited is the right pick for you. One other big thing to keep in mind when purchasing any Ride One Up model is that they tend to require a bit more assembly work than other brands. This translates to a smaller shipping dimension, which saves a little bit of money, which Ride One Up then passes on to the customer. Be sure to check out our Ride One Up assembly video that we did with Matt about all about bikes if you're trying to get a better idea. And one last thing, the Limited is not offered with any fenders or racks. So be sure to purchase those at the same time as you purchase your limited. And as always, we'd appreciate if you use our link to purchase any Ride One Up model. All purchases made after clicking that link help support eBike Escape and help support the channel. Be sure to let us know down in the comments if there's any changes you'd like to see made to the Ride One Up Limited. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. We'll catch you guys in the next one.